This tutorial will tackle 3D projection mapping a wedding cake using QLab 4 software. I'll talk about the challenges I faced with this cake mapping task and two possible solutions. This video is intended to be part tutorial and part learning journey through my experience of approaching this cake mapping project, which I hope results in a better understanding of QLab. If you are only interested in the tutorial part and are just looking for instructions on how to map a cake in QLab, feel free to skip ahead and I will put the timecode in the description. Now I have to admit that I have more experience in other mapping applications like MadMapper than I do in QLab, so I was used to a certain way of thinking about projection mapping. I know this is a tutorial about QLab, but I just want to jump into MadMapper quickly to illustrate where I was initially going wrong when approaching the task of mapping a cake in QLab. In MadMapper, you create surfaces. These can be defined as quads or other shapes. Then you use some media as an input. It might be content of your own or some of these generators or materials accessible inside the software. The input surfaces restrict what gets output to a display, for example, a projector. And we can map these corner points to a physical surface in the real world, like a wall or a building, etc. So to be clear, right now we are looking at our input on the left and our output on the right. What I define over here in the input determines what gets output over here. Now this is the key point. No matter how many input surfaces I add, I can assign them all to the same single media input. QLab is not like this when it comes to projection mapping. I'll show you how it's different by first telling you about my wrong initial approach to this cake mapping project in QLab. Normally when I do cake mapping, I create an input surface for each front tier of the cake. In fact, here is a mad mapper setup I made earlier. Here are all my input surfaces, one for each front tier surface. I thought I would try to create the equivalent of quad input surfaces in QLab by creating a surface per cake tier front. I know the dimensions of these cake tiers, so I could create surfaces with dimensions in the same ratio. So for example, I would create a new surface and call it left one, as in the top tier on the left side of the cake. I know this tier surface is 5 inches high and 8 inches wide. So if I made a surface 800 pixels wide and 500 high, it would have the same proportions. So far so good. Then I would load a guide I made for mapping and trigger it. Click the card to watch a tutorial on how you can make your own one of these or download this one at the link in the description. Now I would assign my guide to the left one video surface and set the mode to custom geometry. Then I'd position it and scale it until it fits snugly inside my surface. Surely I'm onto a winner here. Well, hold on. There are 10 tier fronts to map. That's 10 surfaces. And each video queue can only be assigned to one video surface. That means I need 10 queues. That's 10 video files at 1080 by 1080 resolution playing at once and most of the pixels of each video are not even being seen because they lie outside my surface. That's a lot to put my machine through. And that's the difference. Whereas in MadMapper you can route one media input into many surfaces, QLab needs a video per surface, which is playback intensive and inefficient. It would work, and please feel free to try, but I wanted to find something that would prioritise performance. So everything needed a rethink, and there's potentially two solutions I can think of. The first is to prepare my video content before I bring it into QLab so that it is already pre-cut up into the tier surface sections. That way QLab would only need to play back 10 small video files with no wasted pixels. This might sound like a lot of faff, but the preparation would pay off in performance later on. And actually I think we can go about this in a way that makes things very quick to replicate for other videos going forward. I'll be using After Effects to do it, 
I know this is subscription software that not everyone wants to use. If you want to use free video editing alternatives like DaVinci Resolve or Shotcut, I'm hoping that the principles I explain can be carried over to some extent, if perhaps not as elegant to execute. Inside After Effects then, I'll import my guide. I'll also bring in a video file that I eventually want to put on the cake. I'll drag the video onto the new composition icon at the bottom of the project window so that a new composition is created with the video inside that has the same name, resolution, frame rate and duration as the video file. Next I'll drag my guide on top. This step is important. I'll select both layers and go to Layer, Pre-Compose. I'll call it Put Video Here. I wonder if I'll be putting video in there. Now I'll rename my original comp to Left1 and duplicate it using Command D on a Mac until I have five comps on the left from one to five. The next comp I duplicate I'll call Right1 and I'll duplicate four more so I have comps right one to five. Now inside comp left one, I want to define my region of interest using this tool. I'll put the rectangle around the top left tier. Then I go to composition, crop comp to region of interest. I'll do the same for left two and define a region of interest around the second tier down on the left. Then again, go to composition and crop comp to region of interest. I'll fast forward while I do that for all the tiers until I have 10 comps containing just that corresponding tiers video content. Remember our put video here comp? The beauty of this workflow is that we can put our video content in here and all the comps within which it was nested will update. Now I'll select just one tier comp, go to file, export, add to render queue. In the output module, I'll specify I want QuickTime format encoded with ProRes proxy because that's QLab's favorite codec as stated in the documentation. It will play efficiently, although it's not high quality, so bear that in mind. You might want to experiment with the flavors of ProRes and find a balance of performance and quality you are comfortable with. I can save this as a preset. I'll give a location to save the file. Now when I add the rest of the comps to the render queue, they will output to the same location. And if I have them all selected, I can choose the preset and apply it to all of them at once. Now we're ready to render. If you hit caps lock, it will disable the preview and the renders will go quicker. As you can see, I've organized my project a little bit to make it easier to work with. I can use this project to prepare video content for cake mapping in the future. I've brought in another video file I want to put on the cake. All I need to do is put the video in my put video here comp for it to appear in all my tier comps, so long as I make sure to put the new video above all the other layers. It's the same resolution as my original video, 1080 by 1080, so I don't need to resize it on this occasion, but for a video of a different resolution, I might need to scale it up or down. If your new video is a different duration to the original video, then you'd need to change the duration of your put video here comp and all your tier comps by going to composition at the top and clicking composition settings. There are free plugins available that allow you to do this for multiple compositions at once. I can also use this project to create a photo montage on the cake. I've brought in 10 photos that I want to display, 
one for each frontier of the cake. One method to do this might be to drag a photo into the put video here comp, position it and add a mask to isolate it on a single tier. Another option is to put it straight into a tier comp and scale it to fit. I'll fast forward while I do this for all 10 images. What I've created is a very useful project for preparing my video files for the cake so I'd recommend saving it somewhere accessible with a sensible name so that you can use it again and again in the future. Now I'll drag all my prepared video exports into QLab. What I can do now is create all my surfaces and assign the video cues to their partner surfaces. If you are using a cake the same size as mine, which I recommend, each tier will be five inches high. The top tier will have an eight inch base, with the bases increasing in two inch increments. So the next one down is a 10 inch base, then 12 inches, then 14 inches, with 16 inches at the bottom. If your cake is this size, you can copy the dimensions of my surfaces. If you're using a different size, just remember how I calculated my dimensions. An 8 inch by 5 inch tier translated to an 800 by 500 pixel surface. If you had a 6 inch high tier with an 11 inch base, your surface would be 1100 by 600, for example. I created my left one tier earlier, so now I'm creating a new surface with display and assigning it a projector. I'm using two projectors, so all the left surfaces will be assigned the left projector and all the right surfaces will be assigned the right projector. Both my projectors are the same model and so they have the same name, which can make things a little confusing. However, I happen to know that the first projector listed is my left-hand projector. If you are unsure, you can toggle the visibility on and off to get some visual feedback and help you work it out. If you are using one projector, obviously you assign all the surfaces to the single projector. I'll call this surface left 2 and I'll give it appropriate dimensions. This tier is 10 inches wide by 5 inches high, so I'll make it 1000 by 500 pixels. Jumping back to my left 1 surface, it's time to start mapping the control points onto the physical corners of my cake. I'll turn on the grid to help me do this. I'll do the same for the left two surface I created a moment ago, and for each new tier surface I create from now on, following the same steps as before creating a new surface with display and assigning the correct projector, naming the new surface, giving it the right dimensions, turning on the grid and mapping the corner points to the corners of the corresponding tier of the cake. Remember that when I move onto the right hand side, I'm assigning the right hand projector. Now I go through the process of assigning each tier's video content to its correct surface. I do this in the Display and Geometry tab of the inspector and choose the appropriate surface from the Video Surface drop-down. I'm going to group them. Then inside the inspector, under Mode, I'm going to choose Timeline Start All Children Simultaneously. If I wanted to bring in my other prepared videos to display another look on the cake, I could copy and paste this group in the normal way by using Command C and then Command V on a Mac.
Then I can drag the exports for the second video onto either the target field of the duplicated queue or onto the queue itself to replace it with the new video. I'll set the continue behavior of the groups to auto follow. I'll make the queue sequence loop by putting a start queue last in the queue list and specifying the first queue as its target. I can trigger my first group by selecting it and either hitting the go button or the space bar to see my video content on the cake. So I said that I had two possible solutions. The second option is a bit of a cop out because it involves handling all the queuing in QLab, then assigning the queues to a surface that outputs to Siphon. Siphon is a technology that makes it possible to route the visual output from one application into another in real time. We would then pick up this Siphon output in MadMapper and do all the mapping there. I should also say that Siphon is only available on a Mac. QLab is great and intuitive for handling queues, and the queuing capabilities in MadMapper are not as easy to get to grips with, in my opinion. Check out my tutorial on using queues in MadMapper if you're interested. So there is a case for using two pieces of software to handle the aspects of this project that play to each's strengths. On the negative side, that's two applications you have to invest money in, and I can appreciate that not everyone would want to do that. Still, if you're interested to see how I output from QLab via Siphon for mapping in MadMapper, carry on to the next tutorial video. If you like the video content I've been using, you might want to take a look at my shop where I sell animations, loops, and templates for cake mapping and projection mapping. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If this video helped you, please hit that like button. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on future cake mapping and projection mapping tutorials and videos.